49% of all, uh, you know, quote unquote valuations received a waiver from Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, uh, where, you know, no traditional appraisal was required. And that's, that's a massive, massive increase in terms of the volume of waivers that we're seeing. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome back to the program. Everybody, Dustin Harris hanging out in the podcast here. Boy, it's been a while. You know, sometimes I record these uh, these things uh, kind of in bulk and send them out. And uh, sometimes it's a week or two before I get back to the microphone. It feels like uh, I might be a little bit rusty today. We'll see. I uh, got a great guest coming up, and I can't wait to introduce you once again to a returning guest. But first, I want to pause here and remind you that we are sponsored, of course, by three great companies. One of them being Alamode. Alamode Software is the form filling software that I use to manage my appraisal writing process. And I've been doing so for many, many years. You should check it out as well. Go to alamode.com. That's A-L-A-M-O-D-E.com or 800 Alamode. Sponsored by Data Master. Data Master saving appraisers time. When you save appraisers time, you save appraisers money. And uh, you should look into them. Data Master USA. Sometimes people go to datamaster.com. Don't do that. Go to datamasterusa.com. Datamasterusa.com. And we are sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Been a sponsor from the very beginning. Working RE Magazine, where's I, where I go to find out more about what's going on in the appraisal world. And we're going to talk about today, what's going on in the appraisal world. Um, but you can check out Working RE at workingre.com, workingre.com. Speaking of which, uh, have returning to the program, a great friend of mine and uh, been on the program before, Mr. Isaac Peck, who is the editor-in-chief of Working RE. Welcome back to the program, Isaac. Thank you very much for having me, Dustin. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Well, for those uh, who may just be joining uh, the uh, the podcast recently and haven't heard one of your past uh, episodes, and, and I've had Isaac on quite a few times, uh, Isaac Peck is the editor and uh, of Working RE Magazine. He's the vice president of marketing and operations at OREP. Uh, he's, a, of course, you know OREP. It's also a sponsor here, a leading provider of ENO insurance for appraisers, inspectors, and real estate professionals in 50 states. He received his master's degree in accounting at, in accounting? Really? San Diego State Thanks. University. Uh, he can be reached at Isaac at ORP.org or 888-347-5273. How's that accounting degree working for you on the writing side, Isaac? It, it makes me thankful for what I do. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to be a bean counter. I want to write. That's right. That's right. Well, well, you're an excellent writer, and uh, and uh, I appreciate uh, you coming back on the program because occasionally we have you on, Isaac, because you've written something I think is is really fundamental, and it, and it, and it's something that needs to really have some attention drawn to it. And you recently wrote an article for Working RE Magazine, and the name of the article is Appraisal Waivers, The Future Is Here. And, and I just want to clarify something, Isaac. So I got this on email, and of course, anybody can go to Working RE Magazine and sign up for their free uh, email, and uh, and I get that on a regular basis. So I got this, Appraisal Waivers, The Future Is Here. Uh, does that actually link to, or can you get that on Working RE? Can people go directly to the website to find that? Yeah, if you, if you visit the website, um, it, it'll be on the homepage. Uh, we, we just ran it as a story, but it's also, you know, the our latest, the cover of our latest magazine. Um, and, if, and if you want to be kind of kept in the loop, definitely sign up for the for the newsletter. You'll, you'll get a pop up that'll that'll invite you to to um, to uh, sign up. You know, subscribe to our online newsletter. Okay, perfect. So one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, Isaac, is this is as I as I mentioned, uh, kind of the lead up. You know, this is kind of a fundamental thing. People. When I say people, appraisers, when they hear appraisal waivers, I think the butterflies start to, to run in their stomach a little bit and, and they think, well, gee, you know, what's going on with appraiser waive, appraisal waivers right now? So let's just start with an overview. Uh, give us an idea of what a waiver is and why you wrote this article. So a waiver is, is something that the GSEs, meaning Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, would issue to a lender saying, we don't need an appraisal on this particular loan. So we will accept this loan without a traditional appraisal being done uh, at this valuation. So a lender might say, "Hey, I've got I've got a loan. Uh, this is going to be a traditional refi. We think that that the the property's worth maybe 250, uh, and the loan's going to be 175. Um, and they submit it to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. 
Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac come back and say, here's a waiver. Um, you don't need to get a traditional appraisal on this. Now, most appraisers would be, you know, especially if this is a new concept, they'd say, what? That doesn't make any sense. Why would you ever do a loan without a waiver? Uh, I was in the room in 2017 when Zach Dawson, he uh, at that point was from Fannie Mae. I know you mentioned him in your in your article. Uh, he stood up in front of a group of appraisers and and said that, uh, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, but I remember the, the, uh, the number that he threw out there that the waivers would never equal more than 10% of all loans. What happened? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and I had to include that in the article too, because I, I remember that conversation we had with him. Um, he's, he's an old, you know, he's, he's working for Wells Fargo, I think at this point. So he's not, he's not with Fannie Mae uh, currently. Mm -hmm. um, but so, so that they've definitely deviated from that in, in a substantial way. Um, meaning that, that, you know, recently today, 49% uh, of all valuations are waivers. So almost half, and we'll have to see if, if, you know, in the coming, in the months to come, if that number kind of creeps up to from 49 to 50 to 51, but right, you know, in February of this year, 49% of all, uh, you know, quote unquote valuations received a waiver from Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, uh, where, you know, no traditional appraisal was required. And that's, that's a massive, massive increase in terms of the volume of waivers that we're seeing. If, if people are more visual and want to get an idea of what uh, Isaac is saying here, uh, just I, I encourage you to go to Working RE, look up this article about waivers and just look at the chart that you put in this uh, article because it is, it's, it's, it's gobsmacking. I mean, it is, uh, I saw a chart the other day that, uh, that showed how much Ethereum had gone up in value in and you could have probably overlaid that chart with, uh, with this chart. I mean, it just is exponential. It shoots through the roof. It's crazy. Um, and it's a little bit scary, Isaac, is it not? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think some some appraisers might say, well, gee, is my uh, is my career at risk here when you look at, uh, at the way this has gone through the roof? And let's just be honest. I mean, I remember that very day. Isaac, I think you were there. I was there, uh, you know, in the hallways of the uh, of the convention that we were at when when uh, when Mr. Dawson made that statement uh, that it would never go above 10 10 percent. Again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. So I apologize, Zach, if I'm misquoting you. But but I know that 10 percent was thrown out there. And, and whether you said it would never or may never or whatever, I'm not exactly sure how it was worded. But I do remember the conversations in the hallways afterward. And most appraisers were saying, um, yeah, sure, right. <laughs> we, we've come to not trust government very well, especially uh, when it comes to the GSEs. But, you know, this yeah, is a big deal. That was one of the reasons that, that I, I chose the title, The Future is Here, because mm -hmm. kind of in the, in the last five years or so, you know, I had, a, like you, I, I've had a lot of conversations with appraisers that, that predicted, you know, one day we may see waivers at 30% or, or 40% or, you know, maybe 10 years down the line, we'll see waivers at 50%. And, and here we are, right? The that was 2017 when he said that. Uh, that was not that long ago. Yeah. So, so here it is, right. The, and, and I, I'm sure we're going to get into this, but I, I just want to, before, before we, we, we paint that the sky is falling kind of <laughs> the, the fact is if you look at 2020, the, more traditional appraisals were ordered than than in any past years for as as long as the the, the GSEs have been publishing consistent data about valuation. So, there's actually been more traditional appraisers ordered than than ever before in any past years, and so appraisers have been busier than ever. There's been more traditional appraiser work, even in light of the fact that 49% of all of the GSE valuations have been waivers. Um, so it, it raises a lot of interesting questions in terms of if the GSEs had not expanded their waiver programs in 2020, uh, would appraisers have been able to keep up with that kind of volume? Would, would they have, would, would, he, would all of the active appraisers been able to have done twice as many appraisals? Right. Especially I, given that a lot of the, the older appraisers and, and ones that, that had particular health concerns with regard to COVID, um, Many of them did not appraise uh, or did not do traditional interior inspections in the, the earlier part of 2020. And I talked to a number of, of, of those folks who, who refrained from doing interior inspections. So the GSEs were, were faced with their own hockey stick curve of demand for refinances and valuation services in the face of a, a subsection of appraisers stepping out of the interior inspection game. Um, and so the the you know there's there's a devil's advocate there where where the GSEs kind of are saying off the record, um, appraisers would have been in a much worse position if uh, we had not increased the use of waivers because then we would have had all kinds of lenders screaming at us and AMCs like like the the the, the GSEs off the record are are suggesting that you know it it might have kind of helped the industry and helped appraisers but that they were able to ramp up waivers to to try to meet the demand of 
of the lending community. Um, otherwise, people might have been calling for you know the end of appraisers as we know it because the the there's no there's way to put a cap appraisers would have been able to to meet the volume. Right, right, exactly. I don't know, and I do as you know, I do a lot of private coaching with appraisers, and I don't know of any appraiser currently who is keeping up with the volume that's being sent to them. In other words, every appraiser that I know of, the volume that comes into their email. I don't think anybody has a fax machine anymore, but uh, but you know the phone calls that they're receiving for bids and for opportunities to do work, none of them are doing 100% of that work that's coming in. And so even then, right. even right. then there's, there's obviously this issue, which I guess leads to the next question as to why would a lender or specifically Fannie Mae grant a waiver? Uh, why not just go through and you talked about, I think you talked about one step, obviously appraisers can't keep up with the volume. So there's got to be a relief valve somewhere, but why else would, uh, would Fannie Mae or the GSEs go through this process of, why would they want a waiver? Doesn't it seems like it seems like most appraiser would say it's obvious that an appraisal is going to be a better approach than a waiver. Yeah, so there's there's uh, some graphs in the article that we published, and um, it the, the gist of it is that the majority of waivers are going towards no cash out refinances. Um, so purchases are a very small percentage, and and uh, cash outs are are a smaller percentage. When I say smaller, I mean you know 10 20 percent. Um, 25, maybe pushing 30, but the, the bulk of the waivers are coming from uh, no cash out, what they call rate and term refinances. And the reasoning there is that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, in most cases, are already holding that paper, meaning that they're already holding the loans. You know, gotcha. they've, they've got millions of loans. There are, there are, they already have the loans on their balance sheet, et cetera. And the, the borrower is not taking more cash out. He's just seeking a lower interest rate uh, when seeking to, to do a no cash out refinance. Um, and so in the GSE's minds, they're not taking on new risk. Uh, they're just lowering the payment for the borrower on these types of loans. Which is actually probably less uh, risk, really. Yeah, exactly. So, so they see it as we're actually lowering our risk because I'm lowering, let's say, Isaac's monthly payment. Right. So it's going to be more likely that Isaac's going to be able to avoid default and 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 pay me back if I can you know, lower his interest rate, lower his monthly payment. And uh, that property, that loan is already on my books. Um, and so I think that I'm net net lowering my risk by, by decreasing Isaac's monthly payment, for example. Um, and I'm willing to offer a waiver on that. Um, and they're also, you know, doing waivers to a lesser degree on, on cash out refinances and purchases where they believe they have a lot of data in a homogenized neighborhoods and they've got lots of recently sold comps and that kind of thing. Um, but but the, the, the big push of, of uh, waivers is coming from rate and term, no cash out refinances. Gotcha. Okay. No, that makes sense. And I think, I think, you know, sometimes we as appraisers, and I am certainly guilty of this. Um, we, we, we like what we're used to, right? We like uh, what, what it is that, uh, that we feel we bring to the marketplace. And when something gets disrupted, then obviously, you know, I, I have to channel for a moment, our, our listener who is screaming at, at their, uh, their iPod right now, listening to this podcast and saying, well, Dustin and Isaac, I get it. There's no way, yeah, there's no way in 2020 I could have kept up with the volume if, if that 49% had actually turned into appraisals, and thus we probably would have gotten a black eye, but, and here's the big but, right, what happens when things slow down? What happens when interest rates rise? What happens when uh, there's not as much mortgage volume out there? Then what? Am I going to be out of job? And what would you say to that, Isaac? Help, help assuage our fears. Well, the, the, one of the responses to that is, the idea that volume is up so high right now because of all of the rate and term, no cash out refinances that I just talked about. Right. So when we see, that's, that's, that's what I'm seeing when I'm going out and doing my inspections, I'm seeing a, a great deal. Some are purchases, but most of them are, are no cash out refis for sure. So what, when interest rates rise, um, which they will, you know, eventually, I don't know, you know, how long that's going to take six months, 12 months, 18 months, as interest rates increase the, the, the volume of, of, no cash out refinances will decline, um, which will lead to a to a proportional decline in waivers, sure. um, because that's where the the majority of waivers are taking place. Right. Um, if the the volume of mortgage transactions declines, you know, say for example with purchases, um, if the the real estate market declines generally, then appraisers could see a, a decrease in work. There, there's no doubt about that, but. 
if the, if you if you look at the more you know the the number of mortgage transactions as a pie, the the first decrease to that pie is going to come from the no cash out refinances. Right, and that's a huge section of that pie. Yeah, and that's the that's a large section of where the waivers are being applied. Right. Um, so so let, let me state that a little bit. Let me, if you don't mind, Isaac, let me just state that a little bit of a different way, just because I, I want to make sure that everybody catches what you just heard. Because when I talk to yeah. appraisers and you and you use the word waiver. I mean, they get angry, they get fearful, they get defensive, and, and, and understandably so, but I just want to make sure that we emphasize this. Most of these waivers are no cash out refis, which most of them you're not really doing anyway, meaning if interest rates rise and things slow down a bit, you're not going to feel as big a hit because the majority of what these waivers are going to is going to go away first before the others. Right, okay. right. Good. Good. Okay. All right. I'm glad we, I'm glad we put that out there there. You know, obviously anything that has to do with change, anything that has to do with quote unquote, a threat uh, to the, uh, to the appraisal industry will allow us to step back and think and say, okay, what does this mean? And, and, and rightfully so I, we wouldn't be good business owners, Isaac, if we wouldn't, if we didn't take the time to sit down and, and, and weigh the risk, not that we work off of fear, but that we understand that data is data and data is king. And when we look at data, we can make decisions moving forward. Uh, speaking of moving forward, I want to talk to you a little bit more, Isaac, about what the future looks like, because that's one of the things that uh, one of the titles uh, or the words in, in the title that the, that the future is here. Let's talk about what that looks like when we get back from the break. But I want to first want to pause here and remind everyone that we are sponsored, of course, by Working RE Magazine. That's where we're, where we're at today. Well, we're talking with Isaac Peck, who is the editor in chief of Working RE Magazine. Folks, if you have not gone to Working RE for a while, I encourage you to go back and check out what they have at your disposal. Today is just one example of many that I could give of articles that come your direction on a regular basis. Both Isaac and I mentioned at the beginning of the program today that you can sign up for their free newsletter. I am. I've got my email in there and I get an email a couple of times a week. And I'm telling you, there's some good stuff in there, folks. It's absolutely free. It will draw you to their website, which you can read uh, the information that is there and learn more about your career, your industry as an appraiser. Check them out. Go to workingre.com. Again, it's workingres and working real estate. Com. We're sponsored, of course, by Data Master. Data Master is the place that I go to save money because it saves me time. We're talking about 30 to 60 minutes per report. Now, folks, I don't know if recently you've done the calculations that I do on a regular basis. I can tell you that an average appraisal in our office from start to finish runs about four to five hours. That includes from start to finish, every step along the way. If I can save 30 minutes of that, think of the percentage there that I can shave off and thus the percentage more that I can make of the gross fee that comes in. That's what Data Master does for you. It will do it to, for you just like it does for me. Check them out. Go to Data Master. MasterUSA.com. Again, it's datamasterusa.com. And finally, we're sponsored by Alamode Software. Alamode, of course, is the software that I've been using for, well, I don't know, two and a half decades now, 25 plus years. My mentor, my father used it before that. Uh, folks, these are the leader in the industry when it comes to report writing software. If you're with any other company, I ask you to take another look at Alamode. You can call them, pick up the phone, call them at 800 Alamode, or you can reach them on the internet at alamode.com. <laughs> And welcome back to the program, everybody. We're talking with Mr. Isaac Peck, uh, who is the editor of Working Army Magazine. Specifically, we are talking about an article that came out recently um, that was well-written and well-researched and lots of data found in this. We're, we're barely, barely uh, scraping the top of the, of the iceberg here, but the uh, article is called Appraisal Waivers. The future is here. Welcome back to the program, Isaac. Well, thanks again for having me, Dustin. It's a pleasure, my friend. Let's talk about the future. Um, if the future is here, is, is this the new norm? Well, I think I think it comes back to, you know, how the waivers are being used. Like we like we discussed, they're they're primarily being used on um, non cash out refis. Uh, they're being used to a lesser extent on purchases and cash out refis. So, you know, to the extent that any of us have a crystal ball, we can try to you know model what might happen in, in different scenarios. Um, Appraising is a is a cyclical business, right? So so when the real estate market is hot and there's lots of purchase activity. Uh, everyone is busy. Um, and for the time being, uh, appraisals, traditional appraisers are going to be used for, for purchases. Mm -hmm. um, not only, not only because the, the, the GSEs are, are hesitant to increase waivers in that space, but also because, you know, the great vast majority of purchase agreements are written on realtor forms that, uh, call for an appraisal. Um, and if you look at cash out refis, the, the GSEs are also hesitant to, to increase waiver activity in that space as well. Um, so, so to the extent that, that 
real, the real estate market stays stays healthy and and continues. Appraisers, you know, should be able to to expect a, a healthy workflow and a healthy industry. Do you let me let me approach this from a different aspect? Um, I, because I think sometimes appraisers and I, and I know I find myself in this realm as well that we get frustrated because we see our worth, right? We understand the purpose of an appraisal. Uh, I often say that the appraiser is is the only unbiased. Uh, party in that transaction. Uh, let's take purchases for a second, right? You've got you've got a listing agent, you've got a selling agent, you've got a buyer, you've got a seller, you've got a lender. Every one of those individuals, every one of those parties, if you will, has a built-in bias um, because they are working for their client or they're working for their own best interest. Um, when it comes to appraisers, our best interest should simply be that we do the the honest job of, of truly reporting what the market value is. And so we can get frustrated as appraisers when we see more and more waivers and we say, well, just well, they don't they don't see our worth right they don't see they don't see what we bring to the table do we isaac have a responsibility as appraisers um to to educate to change the system or do we have to just take a back seat and say you know what this is what the gses are going to do i guess i guess this is my future yeah definitely i i think appraisers should be should be um vocal and they should be advocates for their for their profession and whether whether they're doing that you know with their with their blog or their podcast or they're working with with their associations um, or or organizations uh, such as the institute or the National Association of Appraisers, right? That the appraisers need to speak up and and stick up for themselves. And and the other part of that is I think appraisers have an opportunity to um, really do good work uh, now and over the next couple of years, right? The, the, there's a lot of you know, I, I've been in this industry only only ten years, right? Um, which is which is a short amount of time for for a lot of folks uh, that are that are in this space. But I've heard a lot of a lot of talk about how you know appraisers need to stick to their guns and and be independent and resist pressure. And I see you know here in this in this red hot market where people are submitting offers that that are just wild. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't know what things are like in, in Idaho, but here in California, <laughs> it's it's crazy what's going on with prices. It's right? worse here. You're all moving from California to Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very unique. I mean, this is the time where the rubber meets the road in terms of producing defensible reports. Right. It, it's it's easy to talk about kind of kind of being independent and 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 supporting your your work and all of that when when you're not in a super crazy hot market that's just exploding right so now's the time to produce really defensible reports exactly. uh, and really try to prove the value proposition of, of why it's important to have an appraisal right. um and you know the, the the i think those two things are important right appraisers need to speak up and they need to do good work Exactly. Boom. I think you nailed it. This morning, I received one of those angry phone calls from a realtor. Uh, thankfully, it was intercepted by uh, by one of my office staff who basically said, listen, we'd love to talk to you, but we need to get permission from the client first. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, that the contract price was too high. And of course, in her perspective, the appraisal is too low. That's that's always the approach they take. Um, but but the reason I bring that up is I think these are all learning experiences for everyone involved. If we have an opportunity to educate, to help people understand that our job is to not rubber stamp that purchase price. Our job is to not come in at a certain value so they can get their refinance. Our job is to unbiasedly value the property and truly be able to support through statistics, through analysis, through defensible um, uh, language that, that that paints the picture of what we do. And I think the more, as you, as you pointed out very uh, eloquently, uh, Isaac, the more that we can show our worth, the more that we can educate others to, to the understanding of why an appraiser is important, uh, the, the less, uh, you know, these waivers are a concern because people will understand the true value that we bring to the marketplace. Mr. Isaac Peck, thank you, my friend. As always, uh, how can people reach you and how can they uh, get a hold of this article? Yeah, so my email is just my first name, isaac at orep.org. And, um, you know, I'd encourage everyone listening to check out workingre.com where the, where the, the number one source of news in the appraisal industry. Um, so if you want to stay up to date, make sure you're subscribed to our email newsletter. And um, I guess I just want to, I want to leave your listeners with kind of a positive note. And that is you know, that, that appraisers are not going away. Um, and I've had a lot of conversations with, you know, the, the chief appraisers at the different GSEs and, and kind of, and, and the word is, you know, appraisers are not going away. And, and I think that, that the good news is that appraisers have never been busier. Um, but the type of work that might be going away is the, the, 
the tract housing and very hom- homogenous neighborhoods that are that are really easy, right? All of the, the, the a lot of the really easy appraisal su- assignments in uh, in the suburbs with a bunch of comps that look just like it, and and, and you know those assignments may be getting waivers um, and and are likely to receive waivers in the future. But appraisers that that can produce real defensible, high quality work, um, you know, there's going to be a need for those kinds of folks well into the future. Um, And then lastly, you know, I'm just an an editor. I'm a reporter. So don't don't shoot the messenger. I'm just kind of passing along the things that I've heard and the conversations that I've had with with the the big folks that are actually making the decisions at the GSCs and and at the large banks. Well, the article is called Appraisal Waivers, The Future is Here. You can find it at workingari.com. Folks, do not think that we covered this entire article. Um, This is seriously just scraping the top. Uh, There are some awesome graphs. There are some awesome information, quotes from individuals that you're going to recognize. These are leaders in our industry. Uh, and, I, and I think it's well worth your time. Uh, Isaac, I, I, you, you, uh, you've my fears. Um, there's no such thing as a cookie cutter appraisal in Idaho. So my job is safe moving forward. Uh, <laughs> my friend for being on and uh, we'll have you back again very soon. Thank you, Dustin. That was Isaac Peck. Of course, he is the editor of Working RE Magazine. You can find out more by going to workingre.com and uh, we will catch you next time, everyone. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.